Okay, so in the last video, we took a look at just uh, some quick differences between RGB, MRGB, Z add, and Z subtract. And one of the things that I forgot to mention is uh, if I do have any painting on this object, so let's go ahead and let's paint on the head a little bit. Let's go to RGB and just paint. So let's make sure RGB is turned on. I'm going to choose zero paint for my material. I'm going to say color fill with RGB turned on and it's going to fill this object with this color so I should be able to change the color and you see the other guys right the horns the eyes the uh, the little beard that stuff changes color when I change the color picker over here and it's because they don't have a color filled yet right so if I wanted that not to happen and I wanted to fill them with a base color let's say I go to the horns and now I want them to be let's say dark brown right I would say fill object with RGB turned on and now I can go to the beard and I would want the beard to be really dark and you see when I change the color the beard and the eyes update so I'm gonna say color fill object and then now I would want the eyes to update so I go to the eyes set them to a color and repeat color fill object so for me I don't really like having to go up here to the the various menu items usually when I work you know I try if I if there's something like that that I know I'm gonna use over and over again that's where I like having a custom UI you know so for me I've just got fill right here to fill everything um, or if I want to fill a single sub tool I've got fill object right here so I don't have to go up into a menu and get anything so again I know I'm a broken record with this but <coughs> I cannot stress enough how um, how important it's going to be for you to customize your workflow for how you like to work right maybe maybe painting an object is not something you're going to do in your day to day so maybe it's not important to have that um, so I also have my little color picker here but other than that things are the same right I've got RGB M Z add Z subtract down here so let's give this guy kind of a middle red base right and you know we've got our saturation going from left to right right how rich the color is we've got our hue out here on the outer border right what what color you're actually picking then we've got our value up and down right here right um, so I'm gonna go middle value and middle saturation to get almost like a, a vibrant kind of pink and I'm gonna fill this guy right so RGB is on and I'm gonna say fill object right like that and the reason I'm starting with this is because being somewhat in the middle it gives me a place to go in terms of color uh, intensity right so saturation left to right and color lightness and darkness up and down so now for example if I know the, the eyes are going to be white and I want to make them pop out I have my my standard brush selected and I'm just gonna start painting around the eyes also with the standard brush lazy mouse is turned on by default so you get that little red string I'm just gonna go ahead and hit L and turn that off and as we saw last time the very first stuff I do with the uh, with respect to color usually um, I end up going over it quite a bit and trying to build up color and I think for this character what I'm going to do is start painting into the creases a little bit. Now something we didn't look at too much um, in the last class is you can actually mask off. If I go down here to masking and then I look at mask by cavity. I can actually mask by the cavity so I could do that. And every place that uh, ZBrush detects a crevice it's going to give me a mask and I can adjust the cavity profile to say oh no cavities that are more this shape mask by cavity and it, it will adjust or no no only things that are really sharp creases mask by cavity and it will adjust but really at this early stage I don't really need that I just need to have some way to kind of figure out which parts of the surface I want to accentuate and which parts I want to push back 
and very often I try to treat these things almost like um, like uh, practical makeups where I mean the style that of the the you know game film whatever that you're working on certainly trumps anything I'm about to say but for me for my personal stuff something I like to do is to go in and try to accentuate the areas of the sculpt you know that I, where I see plane changes or where I, I want to see some kind of subtlety so here for example in the brow I don't have any indication in the shape of the brow that there's going to be a shape change there but I can add that stuff in later and I'll just give myself a little a little mark right here just to kind of know that that's where a shape delineates and again because I know I'm gonna go over this a bunch um, I don't really sweat the edges too much right now I don't have any alpha applied but we'll do that in a second and I don't want to necessarily paint in lighting sometimes in games um, if it's uh, if it's a game uh, at this stage, a lot of games technologically don't have to do this anymore. Games used to have to do this. But uh, if you have a game where you're consciously kind of painting in the lighting, something like uh, League of Legends, for example, um, or uh, Team Fortress 2 to a lesser extent, uh, if you're painting in the lighting, then you are um, kind of assuming this overhead light. Uh, Dota 2 does that too. Um, I'm not really trying to do that. I just want to paint into the crevices and where there's a big, a big plane change. So now I've gone down in value and if I hit C, it'll let me select my original color. Now I want to go up in value. So let's go up. And when I go up, it gets into this soft pink really easily. So I'm going to go ahead and slide over in saturation and I'm actually going to take my hue and I'm going to adjust the hue so now I'm still in kind of pink town but I'd rather get into purpley pink or orangey right so let's try purpley pink first I'd rather get into that than get into nah let's go orangey then get into uh, red so now now the way I pushed some surfaces down I'm gonna try and pick other surfaces up meaning that you know value wise I took the value and decreased it giving me a darker um, a darker look but now I'm trying to go and get some areas popped up a bit the th the trick is that you need both you need air you need contrast and by default one of my shortcomings artistically is whether I'm sculpting or painting or whatever I always you know have to go back and punch up the contrast you know it's just something that I don't do naturally well um, so let's go ahead and take this let's go and get kind of a pure red maybe a little bit darker and I'm gonna take my RGB intensity for you it's up here for me it's down here I'm gonna turn it down a bit and I'm gonna say fill object a few times actually I could probably go even lower than that so let's go down to like 10% ish I'm going to say fill 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 and you can see that it's starting to unify those colors a little bit I'm going to try something really off the wall here so here I just went kind of purple now I'll go back up to red and you'll just get a depth of color that you won't get necessarily painting it by hand like that and there's things like in the eyes I still want to go back in there and kind of make them darker there's things in the sculpt you know that I want to adjust too. looking at the eyes and the mouth and this is something that's really really important right so I know this is gonna be more of a painting video than a sculpting video but when I when I rough this thing in one of the things that you really have to pay attention to you know so right now I can see from the negative space of the eyes that they have this kind of like almost almost like a, a diamond shape right and it's not desirable it's not what I want when I really look at the contour of that eyelid edge it's changing quite a bit and it's um <coughs> excuse me it's uh, not really flowing 
the way that I would want. So coming in here and taking a second to just kind of nudge it a little bit around with the move tool. And it does not seem like a big deal at all, but it absolutely is a big deal when you're trying to get a character approved. It's something that people will, they won't assume that you'll fix it later. So you have to show them that, you know, it won't be in there now. You will get dinged for it in a lot of professional situations. So I just want this to be kind of a smoother shape. And then when I look from above and below, just as a, a personal preference for this piece in particular, you know, if you're going for something more humanoid, our eyelids tend to be one shape all the way around or one thickness all the way around. But in cartoons especially, going a little thicker towards the middle of the eye and thinner on the inside of the eye in particular on like uh, female or dainty characters really really helpful and then look at it from different angles too right so when I turn like this I can see that there's this weird little bubble right here so as I'm spinning I want to make sure that that eyelid shape reads well and really that's where 90 percent same thing here little bubble that's where 90% of the real work actually gets done in these tiny little moves, right? So you block it in really fast, right? Um, uh, I think especially if you're using the technique that we've been discussing, the whole Dynamesh to Z-Remesh, you know, to, to you know, potentially re-Dynamesh, re-Z-Remesh, and just kind of starting over. That whole process that we've been looking at for just generating a, a quick sculpt, um, if you're using that, the sculpt part is going to come together really quickly for, you know, 80% of the sculpt. But that last 20%, no matter, for me, whether it's painting or drawing or whatever, that last 20% is always the hardest part. Um, and it's the part where you feel most, for me anyway, I feel most frustrated. Like, ugh, I can't do this. And then uh, it's the part you have to to overcome quite a bit. All right, so now the lids look better. And same thing here in the mouth. You know, some of it is paint. And to make sure that you, what you're looking at is real, um, if I go ahead and just hit the little uh, paintbrush icon, I can turn off the poly paint. If I hold shift and hit the paintbrush icon, it turns off poly paint for everything. So now I can kind of come in here and just straighten up that little bubble in the mouth. So for me, the paint is part of the design process for the character. Let's just put a little volume in here. I'm just adding a little fat pad above the eye. Um, if you go back and look at the David, for example, Michelangelo's David, um, you'll see that there's like a nice little fat pad under there that just helps it feel fleshy. So if you're gonna steal, steal from, steal from, you know, great examples. All right, enough sculpting. I could continue to sculpt on this guy forever. So now we're back to this paint job, and now I want to go back and do a little more refined painting. So I'm gonna grab my standard brush, and I'm gonna right-click, go to Alpha, and then choose this little Alpha 07. You can use whatever alpha you want. I have a bunch of alphas online that you can grab, and they actually come in to your alpha palette like this if you install them properly. And there's all kinds of, like, you know, for example, if I go into skin and scales, I can look and here's all this skin, right? So I can load alphas from there if I want. But for now, I'll just use the default alpha 07. I'm going to go over to dots, and I'm going to say color spray, right, or stroke actually in color spray if I go to my stroke and look when I turn on color spray it turns on things like placement scale color flow and these are basically how much variance I'm gonna get so if I choose something like this darker purple and I go to start painting it on here oh let me turn up my RGB intensity I'm not painting only that purple if we zoom in close we'll see that it's the purple 
the dark purple, the orange, like I'm getting a lot of different color inf bits of color information in here. So now I can get a little more subtle. Turn my RGB intensity down, grab this kind of orangey color. And now I'm just going to do washes of color. And I'm going to go over the transitions between some of the areas that I made before. And I'm going to solo this piece so that I can see it without the rest of the objects and now I've got that purple color but I want that to be even darker so I'm going to come in here and do that and then mix in a little of that orange where they meet and you'll just get this little stippling to help uh, make it feel a little more natural And the stippling is coming partially from the kind of stroke that it is and partially from which right now we're using that color spray and partially from the alpha right because our alpha has those little noisy dots on them now sometimes at this stage I'm not even painting in the actual color that I'm going to use. Sometimes at this stage I could paint this guy blue and then just do that red overlay and I end up with some more interesting kind of contrasty kind of bits. So for example let's say we were going to make this guy blue and purple instead of a typical red you know red demon. If you get this sometimes I get this where it drops down to the canvas just hit control N and it'll get rid of all the the non-real copies. I'm not sure what I'm hitting on the keyboard to do that. Uh, I know uh, Shift S will give you a copy like that, but I, my hand's nowhere near Shift S right now, so I don't know what else I'm hitting on the keyboard to do it. But I do it sometimes. So now let's say again we wanted to make this guy kind of kind of bluish, right? So I'm going to go ahead and take the blue, set my RGB intensity really low, and if I keep going, it'll just go to that same blue. But if I somewhere in here kind of stop, then now I can kind of get some of the contrast that I had previously. So let's just do this because it'll be something that's a little bit different. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it'll certainly be different. Another thing to pay attention to is um, if you're not familiar with with color theory, you know, things like complements or split complements or, um, you know, uh, triptych or triads or anything like that, then what you there's everyday things that you can kind of pay attention to and key off of. So for example, um, the now Charlotte Bobcats, when I was growing up, they were the Charlotte Hornets. They had a purple and blue motif, right? And there's all this study done. You know, uh, the Knicks, for example, have um, uh, orange and blue, which are straight up complementary colors to try and you know when you see their logo complementary colors are supposed to make the rods and cones in your eye, your eyes uh, vibrate a bit right um, the Lakers have purple and gold for example you know so looking at something as simple as like sports teams and trying to figure out you know hey is there a color combination there that I can use so when I started using this blue in my head I went straight to purple as a foil for the blue as a, as a compliment for the blue just because I know that was you know something I've seen used successfully before you know and um, I also ha maybe have a little bit too much faith in the fact that these kind of you know these kind of endeavors like a sports franchise or something like that that's not something that I mean people sunk a lot of money into something like that it's not something that they would just kind of willy-nilly go oh yeah I picked these two random colors. There's actually been a lot of thought in it, so I'm just trying to hijack someone else's brain.
all right so now we've got this little purpley looking guy and I'll just try to go complete opposites so I'll go across the, the wheel so just complement and just kind of get kind of a pale yellow and let's see if we can take this and incorporate this and again my RGB is set really low right now it's set to 30 percent and feel free I mean look when you're designing a character a color is a huge part of it so you know the design is not only the sculpt or not only on paper so here I'm actually taking this and trying to push this design All right, so I like the way that that's kind of incorporating a little bit. And it's going to let me really, really go dark here around the eyes. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off solo. And I'm going to turn on the fill for the rest of the pieces. All right. And immediately I want to go to these horns. And you see how the eyes are lighter and now they just pop out because of that dark around the eyes. So I want to go to the horns. And I'm going to go and sample some of this purple. I'm going to go really, really dark saturated purple. And I'm just going to say fill object, turn my RGB all the way up. And now they're really this dark, dark, dark purple. And now for the horns, I want to start to kind of lighten them up a bit. And kind of pick out which part of the, you know, looking at the horn is, you know, going to, you'll, if you see just that one shape, you'll look and go, oh, you know, I, I see that shape and you'll move on. You understand that shape really quickly. But if I can add some contrast to that shape, then um, it'll be even better. So let's say I go super dark. Let's, let's go even black here at the edge of the horns. And then maybe a little bit lighter here at the base. And this, the reason I did that instead of going dark at the base only is just because now um, everything's leading you in towards the face. So I'll do the same kind of thing with the ears. So if I pop back to the skin here, I can go ahead with the ears and make them a little dark. And I can go to the skin here and make the skin a little dark you know so for a presentation you know you're presenting this to a client now the face has a stage right everything around it kind of leads you to the one area and you're using dark and light you can go the other way and make everything light and the one thing dark in the middle but having the contrast is the important thing and then um you know the area of most contrast here is in the face you know so the thing is um, you know it's like like I've probably said this a, a hundred times in class already with all of this stuff you you know if you're looking for one button to kinda go oh what button do I press to make this thing better this is not the right class right like that's just not the way I try to operate almost at all I try to say, okay, well, what what decision making can you have at your disposal to make good choices in the future? And then if you are honest with yourself, you make a choice and you say, you know what, that's not a good choice. And you undo it. I started this thing red and I didn't really like where it was going. So I was like, all right, let's try something totally different. Red is warm. You know, let's go cool. Let's go cooler colors and see if that works better. I like this better than what we had, you know. So that's kind of the way I try to, to look at all this stuff. I, at, at any point, I have a whole toolbox at my disposal, and I want to use the right tool for the right job. That requires me looking at the job in front of me and making an assessment and trusting my, trusting my assessment and going, I don't like this. Okay, let's, let's not use the hammer here. Let's use the screwdriver, right? So that's, that's an important, important trait. So... I'm going to go into the eyes now because I've developed in in ways I've developed like all of the skin up to a point 
and I don't want to finish off the skin yet without touching the the rest of the the model so I'm gonna go to the eyes and I think yeah I stored a morph target for the eyes right that had that little uh, notch not put in it and also it looks like I need to move them so I'll move them back a bit the morph target was probably stored when they were up a little more forward so I'm gonna do this um, so I stored a morph target right so I have the eyes there but I don't want that little notch cut out of them because now I, I really want to paint the eyes but when I stored the morph target the eyes were moved forward in a different scale so what I'm gonna do to match what I had position wise and scale wise I'm gonna go over here I'm gonna turn off um, the other layers and I'm gonna duplicate the eyes right so now I have only you know the duplicate selected and in the duplicate I'm just gonna leave the duplicate alone and here I'm gonna say switch and now it's showing me both sets of eyes and I can see the scale difference right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on transparency you know for you and the regular UI if I go restore standard UI sorry about that you have transparency and you have ghosting over here right so you can choose to ghost it or not and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move these you know smoother eyeballs to match the position and scale of the other eyeballs so now I can kinda hold shift and drag out transpose so that it's even and I'll drag it just so I see the outline of these things kinda the same and again if you hold shift like just when you move like now I'm only moving um, horizontally and if I drag hold shift with transpose down like that click in the middle and hold shift now I'm moving only vertically and I can see more or less I get a pretty good match right from all axes I don't see the outline of the other one right and uh, now if I turn everything on so I'm gonna hit shift and hit the eyeball on the active subtool I'm gonna turn off ghosting turn off transparency and now I've got my eyes in there without the actual shape cut out and I can go back to the subtool that has the shape cut out and I can double check it by just clicking on the eyeball and I'm gonna just say delete I don't need it and now we're gonna paint an eye on here and I'm gonna start with a standard cartoony eye but some tells me we might not end up with just a standard cartoony eye in here so um, I'm gonna turn on my symmetry oh sorry there we go make sure symmetry is turned on and the way that I painted the eye for the cosmonaut is the way that I want to paint the eye for this but the first thing I want to do is I want to get another material so I'm gonna go and get that zebra eye reflection material and now I'm going to say go up to M and say color fill object and that's gonna fill the eyeball with that shiny material now I'm gonna go back to the skin go back to my zebra paint and I'm gonna say fill object and now the skin is filled with that and I'll do the horns to that same same material so I'll grab the horns say color fill object and again material has to be turned on for this to work and now it doesn't matter what material I switch to we see the beard changes we haven't done anything with that yet but the eyes and the and the uh, horns don't change and this zebra paint material is really nice because it has a highlight on it you know a really strong highlight by default so you get that feeling of looking at an eye right sometimes you might want to go matte with it and you don't want the reflection so in that case this wouldn't be the the best choice a lot of times I'll paint it matte just to be able to see um, the color so we need to make sure we have enough points so we've got 786,000 points and yeah that looks like that'll probably be enough but now I have to go back and adjust my brush so I'm gonna change my alpha and go to something like uh, alpha 14 right it's a really hard edge alpha it's got a little bit of blur to it but again when I paint it looks really stipply on the edges right and that's because down here in stroke I have to turn off color spray and go to dots or drag dot so I'll show you dots first dots is the regular painting mode and if you paint over it you can get 
a shape, right? But here I want to use drag dot instead. And what drag dot is going to do is it's going to let me place and drag the actual dot. Now, your focal shift is turned on, and focal shift is again that size difference between the inner red circle and the outer red circle. So I'm going to take focal shift and turn it down to zero, and you see, you can see under my cursor there, it starts to change. You know, the, the I don't I no longer have a big gap between the inner red circle and the outer red circle. I'm going to take my RGB intensity and turn it up. And now I can make a pretty perfect looking shape. And we can decide you know how much we want on the eyeball. So let's go and say let's get totally black. And again, you know, if you put this thing completely flat dead on like that, he looks a little wall-eyed or even you know totally not alive if you take it and just there's a little sweet spot if you go in too far obviously you're cross-eyed there's a little sweet spot right in here where if I kind of do that it'll, it'll look like he's focusing and looking at you when you look directly at him um, and let's go and say take our size for the brush so right now we're at 86 I'm just gonna take it down a little bit let's go 65 and now I'm going to choose my secondary eyeball color. So let's go totally red. Because I want something that's going to pop. I have all this cool. And I want something that's going to pop out. So let's go maybe a little bigger than 65. Let's go 73. And I can drag that right into the middle like so. And now I'm going to go way smaller go back to black and drop in the pupil alright now I'm gonna go back to my regular stroke and I'm gonna get a much softer alpha so let's go and get something like alpha 1 and I'm gonna get some pink maybe really dark actually dark red and take our RGB intensity down a little bit and just a tiny little bit out here I'm gonna start to add a little red to the eyeball so when we turn it it you know got a little depth to it I'll do the same thing in here and I don't want to interrupt things too much and here's where turning on that transparency can be really helpful um, because now when you turn things transparent ZBrush knows that you oh and I'm going to take my focal shift and turn it back to zero that will help with the softness so now when I do that ZBrush knows that I can paint beyond where that edge is which is kind of nice now if you're if you have something that's going to be animating right obviously don't, you don't want to paint this eyeball shape into it but um, I'm going to turn on solo really quickly if you have something that's going to be animating you don't want that but if you uh, if you don't care about you know the eye moving so in our case we're just making a maquette right so if we don't care about the eye moving then no harm no foul so I'll put that on there and then I'm going to just color pick that original kind of off white that I put in in here and I'll just kind of go over it in little circles and just kind of paint it up and then I want to be able to smooth this but I don't want to adjust the shape of the eyeball right so if I hold down shift right we see the cursor goes from uh, red to blue right because now I'm in smooth mode I'm gonna turn off Z add for smooth and also the less resolution you have the the stronger smooth will be so I don't want to interrupt anything in here where the iris where the iris and pupil are but if I go over here to the outskirts and smooth now I'm smoothing only the paint and if I go up in resolution one thing that can happen when you do that is you see now some faces are no longer tagged with that zebra eye paint material 
and that sucks so if I go up to the highest resolution that I have go grab that material again zebra eye reflection and then go up to material and say color fill object I think that's just a bug sadly but now you should be able to go back and say alright now I've got you know everything working properly so turn off transparency and solo and then now in the actual eyes I'm gonna paint a bit and I'm gonna go let's see we've got our standard brush regular stroke soft alpha alright so let's go and say let's pick this up a little bit with some fiery yellow or orange I'm gonna turn my brush really really small and this is where you know just to be able to see what I'm doing um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this zebra um, paint material and I'm actually gonna fill the eyes with it temporarily so I'm gonna go up to material and say color fill object just to be able to see what I'm painting and make sure I go back to RGB and now I can kind of paint in a little yellow one thing I do wish ZBrush had that you know programs like Maya or Max have is um, multiple cameras because here's a place where I want to zoom in and see what I'm doing in the eyes but I also want to zoom out and see what's happening you know when I look at it from far away and unfortunately the only way I know to do it is to really zoom in and zoom out you know so I'm not gonna go too far on this so here I'm just adding a little darkness and I just want this stuff to read I don't need it to be totally smooth and almost the impression that I want is that this character is like looking into fire and you're seeing the fire and the iris and the iris and the pupil and that's not something that I ever thought of before in my whole life it's something I'm looking at what's in front of me and I'm responding to it right now alright so probably good enough and now if we go go back to eye reflection and set my material channel on color fill object now we've got a little bit more depth to the eyeball we can come in here with a much tighter alpha and if you wanna get it, here's where you gotta be careful and actually this is the first place that I'll use RGB and Z add at the same time I'm gonna turn my RGB intensity way up my Z add intensity down quite a bit I'm just gonna do a test so I wanna do like a little vein here on the eyeball let's go darker and maybe a little less intense on the RGB maybe a little more intense on the Z intensity so I'm just trying to tune it and find the right right place alright so that's okay for me you can go in and probably it's a little too medical for something of this level but just to kind of demonstrate you know that you can use painting and sculpting tools together you could go in and do that if you wanted to I'm actually gonna undo that because I don't like it um, but now we're gonna use that same technique to look at secondary and tertiary details here on the the model on the, the skin so one thing to note the skin because we use that Z remesher technique the lowest resolution here is 7000 points and if I go up to what has been our highest res right now it's 117,000 so it's not in the millions you know it's not something that's really kinda crazy but I'm gonna divide it up to 1.8 million and now we can really get in here and detail this stuff if we want to so um, I'm gonna go ahead grab this darker color here and maybe 
make it a little warmer so I'll grab like a purplish purplish pinkish really saturated and I'm gonna test doing the same thing that I just did with that little vein on the eyeball only this time I'm gonna turn on Z sub and this alpha is probably a little too sharp let's see if we do something like this it's a little better let's turn the focal shift up All right, let's turn the Z intensity up. Yeah, cool. So this is essentially the same kind of thing that we did to the to the cosmonaut, where I want to have a little bit darker uh, stuff going on in those crevices. But the crevices should be there to support the shapes that I have. So in the brow, for example, let's say we do... something like that and let's try one thing really quickly let's go here and a lot of people you know you can't really tell a lot of times the difference between the dot stroke and the freehand stroke 99 percent of the time you know you don't really see a difference one of the major differences is you know the freehand stroke is a little more computationally intensive dots it's like kind of sampling every little bit like every you know few centimeters or whatever and you can actually get what look like little dots as a result freehand it's sampling at a much higher rate um, so you don't really see the little dots so usually you know you would think like oh well I'm only gonna use freehand freehands better but you really don't need it a lot of times so here I've kind of done that. I don't really like it. I'm going to undo it. I'm going to look and see what other brushes I can use to do the same kind of thing. Um, so again, it's that thing of if it's not working, don't don't defend it, right? So here, that wasn't really working. Let's see what other brushes we've got. I'm going to try my Damien standard, and I'm going to set it to RGB and Z sub and much better much 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 better much better feeling so now I'm gonna turn this down and it's probably a little too dark undo that so for me it's a lot of trial and error you know like you might think that a lot of times it's like oh well if you know the program already you know what you're doing definitely not the case for me maybe for other people but for me I try a bunch of stuff see what works and then you know if it doesn't really work well then I try something else but the evaluation part that's the part that it, it took me a long time to get comfortable with because it does force you to have to trust your eye and trust yourself and um, when I finally did get comfortable with it um, it's something that I realized I should have been doing a long time ago um, and that's that's the part that I try to instill in you guys a bit like you actually alright so you don't know ZBrush well but you're a person who's been walking around you know what you think is good and bad in art you know and yes that's a totally subjective loaded bag but you can you can make determinations about what you think looks good and, and doesn't right and that's really all you have at the end of the day we're all using the same kinds of tools and we might be using them in slightly different ways but your personality and your personal taste at the end of the day it's the only thing that makes you different from me so you know you should definitely trust yourself to look at it and go oh this works or this doesn't work and then now it's just about learning techniques so when one thing doesn't work you try something else you know So here I'm just trying to look at the history of the character and just say, okay, well, they would bend or crease or fold this way. And actually, I'm going to take this, turn down the Z intensity a bit because this isn't such an active fold. 
And if you make all the folds like this deep, then you don't have a way to accentuate. You know, if you want to have like kind of a main fold. So here I'm just kind of going over the skin a bit. You'd see like creases in the skin as you get further away from kind of the apex of the fold. So almost think of it like an earthquake. Like this is the epicenter and things are going to get really tight in here. But then as you get further away from the epicenter, things branch out a little bit, right? So that's kind of the way. And I'm going to give this guy some eyebrows and eyelashes too. And now some areas, right, I'm adding this dark color to all these crease areas because a lot of the crease areas are kind of light but in some areas you might want to add you know kind of creases and crevices and wrinkles and things and again you want contrast right if you look at my wife's skin is a lot darker than mine if I look right in places where she'll have a, a crease or a wrinkle or a fold or something like that like in in the inner arm or something like that what you'll notice is that you know where for me things get really dark in those crevices in a lot of places and you can even see it on my arm um, if you see this video and this would be a, a test for anyone to see if you're actually watching this video on my arm where I have a tan on the outside of my arm when I fold my arm up you can see at the elbow the crease gets lighter in the crease right so again it's just contrast it's not like oh the creases are always darker or always lighter it's just contrast you know here in the top of the head bone comes close to the surface so not too much wrinkling or skin sliding there um, but here under the eyes I want to add some of that shape or add some of that contrast and to do it I have to go lighter so I'm going to turn up my RGB intensity here So let's go ahead and add some eyebrows for this guy really quickly. Another example of this kind of color scheme, besides you know sports scenes, I didn't even think of, is uh, Sully, Sully from Monsters Inc. He went a little more kind of you know heavy on the the blue to purple, you know, and we started that way, but I ended up with this kind of pale blue yellow thing that I actually kind of liked so I'm just gonna go over here and say extract accept right away I'm gonna clear the mask again because again if I solo this remember that mask is still there right so if we turn off the paint you can see the mask is still there um, so whenever I extract I always clear the mask on that subtool first Let's turn solo off and now I'm going to go down to the piece that I extracted and the first thing I do here is turn on symmetry and then I smooth. Remember for my smooth if I hold down shift I only have it set to RGB right now so I'm going to make sure I turn it to Z add and then that'll smooth back to my original silhouette. I'm not quite sure about you know how things work but I'm not clearing the mask on the eyebrow itself right I went down to that subtool turned on mirroring and now I'm just hitting it with a, a layer of smooth 
and making sure the ad is turned on for the smooth so then that way it smooths back to my original silhouette that I painted right originally you get this kind of blobby mess and then the other thing I'm gonna do is with the with the um, let's solo this and zoom in so let's go solo whenever you do an extract right with the default options let's say I get rid of that shape I actually end up with three shapes right the first shape is the inside surface the second shape is the outside surface and then the third shape you can see it really thin here is the edge so I can always get back to those those surfaces so for example here on the outside I want to put a little shape on this eyebrow right so I'm gonna go ahead and control shift click on just the outside control click in the background so I get a mask there and then control shift click in the background again so it shows everything and then control in the background so it inverts so now when I turn solo off I can move this eyebrow around let's get our move brush I can move this eyebrow around like so and I never have to worry about the base coming off right so let's fill this with a darker well actually we'll do that after we shape it so I'm gonna go ahead and kinda pull the brow out a little bit and I'm just looking for a shape that complements that ridge line there right the brow ridge and I'll kinda smooth that back like so and then now I wanna look for a shape in this direction that complements the ridge line here right so let's do that and now I'm gonna clear the mask so now I can fill everything so just control drag a box in the background and now I'll go let's say we go completely dark completely black on this and I'm gonna go color fill object and I'm gonna set my material to, to um, I'm gonna set my channel selector to material go over to zebra paint and I'm gonna say color fill object let's go down here to the chin also let's go here and say color fill object right and also let's set this to RGB and say color fill object alright so now he's got really dark kinda hair um, and now to separate to separate the brows we can kinda see as soon as we get any kinda little shadow under there right we end up with that so I'm gonna go down to the it's all responding to what you see there so uh, and go back to my Damien standard I don't like the way the brow kind of muddies in when I squint so I'm gonna go here and grab this color and I know some of that is just the lighting you know in here but I'm gonna grab my standard brush again and I'm gonna come in to the little fat pad that we added turn our focal shift back down get a soft alpha again I'm just gonna pick up the color in that fat pad so now I can see a little something in the difference between those when I turn it and now if I go back to here to the eyebrows I'm gonna turn off my paint for a second right now it's just the topology is whatever I got from the extract right so I'm gonna grab my pinch brush so B then P and then grab the pinch brush and here on the outer edge I'm just going to pinch that a little bit tighter so that I get a little bit of a ridge. And I don't want to go in and sculpt in individual hairs because he's kind of not that, he's not that level of frequency, right? So now if I have that, like so, I want to go in and go over to geometry. And just like everything else, I want to Z remesh it, right? So target polygons, I don't need 5,000 polygons. I'm just going to hit 0.1. And I hit Z remesh, takes a second. And if I look now, I've got 412 polygons. And if I look, I've got reasonable topology. So if I need to, you know, sculpt or change this, like this bottom half, right? If I want to go ahead, I'll pop back to my UI. Just because I have all my brushes here. If I want to go ahead and flatten out that bottom edge, let's say I use H polish, I can go ahead now and do that and I know I have topology that runs that way so I can quickly flatten out that bottom edge 
So the closer I am to the beginning, the less I care about topology. The more I'm figuring out the shape, the more important topology is going to be. Also, you'll notice technically it's a new piece of geometry, right? So when I filled before with Zebra Paint, it didn't actually remember. So I'm actually going to go in and say, fill this with like a slightly lighter, maybe going completely dark like that. Yeah, that's a little better. So now I'll do that and I'm going to say, uh, let's go over here. I'm going to hit material and fill object. And then let's get the same color on the beard. So I'm going to go uh, RGB fill object and he's already filled with the other material and now in the beard I get this weird little thing here so I definitely want to fix that so let's go ahead and say see if we can kind of move that around a bit and again if you hold alt you move on the normal right so uh, if it starts to kind of penetrate the skin a little bit I just hit alt and just dab it and it pulls out and that's with only with the move brush and I just want to get a good line for the beard and a good line for the chin and how it intersects the beard um, another example of this you know uh, color that that's coming to mind is the genie from Aladdin Now I'm coming up with so many animated references that I'm like, oh God, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> All right. So now, you know, we could start getting into kind of finishing touches on things. Let's go back into the skin and just to make them kind of somewhat human relatable, I'm going to go back to my standard brush, go to alpha seven, get kind of a reddish color let's take our RGB intensity and turn it down and let's get in here and put a little little red in the nose And one thing, one of the, the last things I'll try and do here is people don't realize how important for these kinds of characters eyelashes are. Eyelashes can really make or break a character like this. Now, in the case of our guy, he's got so much dark around his eye that it may not be that big of a deal. But I'm going to add them in anyway because they definitely help, um, you know, especially on uh, like... Uh, female characters that can really help accentuate the eye in a certain way and you know even with male characters like this but then again I don't know that many demons so maybe maybe this is a a female demon who knows alright so let's get in here into this eyelid and sometimes what I'll do so here I'll use mask lasso right and I'll kind of get under here and I'll do this and just kind of trace the contour of the lid a little bit like so and it doesn't have to be perfect now the thing about this is as I'm doing this mask lasso goes all the way through your model so in the top of the head somewhere there's gonna be a little mask up here like that so you just got to make sure you go back and get rid of that that little mask. So now I can tighten up the mask, right? Control Alt, click on the surface, and when I tighten it up, I can see that it's not doing exactly what I want. So I'll go back to Mask Pen, and just kind of paint it in. And remember, we're going to Z remesh this. So <coughs> excuse me, and we're going to pull it away from the surface so it doesn't have to be totally um, totally clean but I just want to get the the coverage right on it alright so now let's take this and let's go <coughs> extract right our normal move say accept clear the mask go down to the extracted layer turn on our symmetry you know smooth it so we can smooth it back to closer to the original silhouette 
and man that's a lumpy mess now you can play around with the extract value too I'm gonna go solo this really quickly you can play around with the extract value as well um, and to try to get a thinner piece but again for something like this it doesn't really matter that much I'm gonna invert the mask so control click in the background and I'm gonna hit smooth again and then do it again invert smooth and this is going to pull it off the surface a little bit, but we can always dab it back onto the surface. And now I can kind of smooth the whole thing a little bit, just to get rid of those little lumps and try and get a smoother shape. But again, remember, we have those polygroups, right? So I can go ahead and grab just the outer group. Let me make sure, let me unsolo this, so I make sure I'm grabbing... Nope, see, I would have done that wrong. I'm going to grab just the outer group here, uh, control to make it a mask, control shift click in the background to show everything, so now it's showing the whole eyelid, and then control to lock down the back of the eyelid. So now I can take the front of the eyelid and I can shape it. I can make the eyelid as thick as I want, so thin at the corners and thicker in the middle. And you can kind of choose. This is one of the things about making the eyelids, you know, uh, for a character that really can speak to the character. You can kind of choose. You know, if this was a lady, maybe we take the eyelids and make it really heavy out here. If you're going for like a sultry Jessica Rabbity kind of thing, maybe we do that. Maybe we'd even put a little, a little curve in it. You know, but. We'll keep this guy kind of stereotypically masculine. Geez, another character uh, with a similar color palette, uh, Hades from Hercules. Well, at least if I'm subconsciously stealing, I'm stealing from good material because these are all characters, you know, that I like a lot. Alright, and now just to be able to shape it a little better for the future, same old geometry Z remesher. I'll go down to point 0.1 like I did with the eyebrow. Say Z remesh. There we go. Now we have semi regular kind of mesh that we can adjust. Much lower resolution, so kind of nicer to deal with. We did lose our polygroups though, so you'd have to go in and remake those polygroups if you want them. So good enough, and let's go completely, or actually, you know what, let's not go completely black. Let's say, go that color. So I'm going to fill object RGB, fill object MRGB, make sure that's chosen, and now I've got that. All right, and I'm ready to start putting the final touches on this guy. We've been going for about an hour to color him, right? So we're at, right now, an hour and three minutes. And um, let's go ahead and take this guy and make some final shape adjustments. And what I'm going to do to make it kind of read more as a bust and get it ready for presentation, I'm going to go here and I'm going to smooth out that shape, kind of pull it down. And my smooth now has RGB turned off because I don't want to disturb the paint too much. I just want to kind of pull him around like so. Let's pull his neck up a bit like that. So from the front, it's almost like he's a, a game trophy. And I'm just trying to get a little separation between the ears and the silhouette, the ears and the uh, the shoulders, right? I don't want them overlapping. They do make a little bit of a tangent right now where they both come in at the same point, but I don't really mind that, actually. I kind of like it. 
So if one side of the ear is curved, the other side of the ear make it straighter. You know, all these little little ideas and rules and whatever. And the more you kind of practice them, the more they stick in your head. And I always feel funny saying that because I know that there's ones that I don't practice that, you know, uh, if I'm not honest with myself, I look back at a video like this later and be very ashamed. So now, go back up to our high res. I'm going to go to clip curve. I'm going to choose this dark purple, right? Kind of the darkest purple in the skin. And in clip curve, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, I'm going to draw a clip. Now, you see where the dark part is? When I do that clip, if I do that, it's going to try to go through and cut both sides of this at that angle, right? So it'll give me, take a second, and it'll cut like that, right? I'm going to undo that because if you hold Alt when you clip, so I'm going to hit Control Shift to lay down the clip, and I'm going to hit Alt. And Alt lets you lay in kind of another edge, right? Or another kind of anchor point. So now it's going to go through and figure out how to clip at that shape uh, and this is with perspective off right and now I'm gonna hold down shift so control shift and then just shift and then if I let go of shift I can use the space bar we'll cover this one in class and I can kinda move that around so now I wanna clip the bottom like so and then I wanna go to profile and I wanna do the same thing again so let's go try to find an interesting shape here from profile Now, you may end up when you clip with this little flange right here. And that's because when I went to go clip, you see how this surface rolls back like this? I'm clipping after that surface rolls, black, rolls back. So it's m clipping only smushes. It's not changing the topology. It only smushes the topology that's there into a shape. So as I go to clip that shape, we could see that I'm getting, I'm getting that. So what I'm going to do pre-clip is just go through and pinch this guy so that I get one ridge and then now I'm just gonna say okay well I, I just need to make sure I go in front of that that ridge basically so I'm gonna use the clip curve again and I'll just draw a curve and again remember I can use spacebar to move it around actually I don't like that So I'm going to undo that, and then let's go Control Alt. I hit Alt here to get the beginning of a curve, and then Alt here maybe. That's a nicer curve, I think. And then hopefully we won't get that little that little flange. Oh, we might actually because it's picked up there. Yeah, we will. All right. So now I've got that. Let's smooth this out try to deal with it this way now you have to observe where the shadow side is for the clip so here I have to draw this on this side because the shadow side was on that side And the nice thing about having a nice Z-Remesh thing like this is I can go down to a lower resolution and then kind of smooth where smooth is more responsive because there's less edges to smooth and then come back up here and do any kind of cleanup. So for getting ready for like a presentation or something to a client, you can just make kind of a more interesting, cleaner shape like that. You know, probably I'd want to paint this up, maybe make a little base for them to rotate around on and next where we're gonna go is uh, we're gonna take uh, this character I'm gonna do this demo for you again in class and we're gonna take this character and we're gonna start to um, do renders of them right so uh, 
really quickly. You know, the default render looks like this. I can see the shadows are really, really harsh. So I'm going to go ahead and take the shadows and I'm going to take the global strength of the shadow and say 0.4. And now render that. All right, now the shadow got a little lighter, but it's still, I want kind of softer lighting, st studio lighting almost. So I'm gonna take this angle and let's take the angle and make it four. And now when I do the soft lighting, I would, the edge should be softer in the shadow there. So, okay, cool. Still really dark though, and the whole tone's really, <laughs> excuse me, dark. So there's a few things I can do. Um, if I go over to BPR filters. I'm going to turn on a filter called Orton, and Orton lightens up everything, right? So that made everything a little lighter. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to choose Orton again, and that's going to brighten everything. But I'm going to turn this shadow mask all the way up, and now it's only brightening in the shadows. So if I look and turn that on and off, you can see all the shadows get a little brighter. I'm going to go over here turn on sharpen and I'll do that a couple of times actually so I'll say sharpen <coughs> excuse me and then another sharpen on top of it and again you can see what the what the impact of any of these are if you turn them on and off and now I'm gonna go over here and say let's turn on colorize and you could choose a color red blue whatever in our case, let's just go red, like totally, totally red. And now it made everything red, but again, I can turn on the shadow mask, and now it's only red in the shadows, so I get a little bit of that that red pop in the shadows. So if you're sending stuff to a client, this is kind of a really cool way to just set up a quick render. We have, we're not going to do compositing yet, where we render in different passes and comp everything together. That's later. But for now, if you just want to do a single pass, this is a great way to do it. And while you're in this BPR mode, what you can do, let's get rid of that first Orton, or at least turn it down a bit. So now if you're in this uh, mode, what you can do is I can go up to movie. I'll go large document and I'm down here. I'm going to turn off title image and overlay image. And I'm just going to hit turntable and it will actually render out a turntable for me. Um, and again, we're not dealing with something, you know, that is, you know, 15, 20, 40 million polys. It will actually go through and render the frames relatively quickly. You know, you can go get a cup of coffee and come back and you'll have a full turntable, you know. So here it's on frame three, frame four. And by default, it does 180 frames, you know. So at the end of this, you can export your movie. So I'll just stop this let's just say we only wanted to render this much of it to send the client so I'll just stop it and if I go over and say movie uh, export it's gonna ask me where I want to save it so I'm just gonna go to my desktop and I'll call this test it's gonna ask me what format I want to save it in usually I don't use the H.264 format that's the default uh, that's like a QuickTime format that um, I really don't like so I go down to photo JPEG usually um, and it's a little truer to the color I originally had I hit OK it exports it as a movie and now I have a movie file on my desktop that I can play so um, part of what you guys are gonna do to finish off this second project is actually make a turntable movie right so if that part is not clear we definitely need to make sure in class that everyone is clear on that process but to export the actual movie I don't really care if you do the render or not you don't have to do the render but you should export the movie right so that's kind of the 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 way I'm thinking about it so yeah um, and I'll pass this file to you guys so you guys can take a look at it and examine it and mess around and pull parts of it off if you want or whatever um, don't use any other parts of this in your your piece for class but if you want to have it for reference for later then that's that's totally fine and as I'm looking at this there's just one more little thing and this is uh, you can see nobody is perfect for sure 
um, especially me. And, uh, you know, right now I'm looking at this and I'm like, I just want to change too many things, but we need to end this video. So I'll just, I'll just end it there. All right. So I'll see you guys in class and hopefully this stuff made some sense.